joining us now as he does uh, most every week at this time, usually. Um, definitely, he's always here. Sometimes, usually, no. Sometimes the time changes, of course, but we always appreciate the time of our next guest, Washington Times columnist Charles Hurt. Hello, sir. Hey, Steve. Thanks for having me, as always. Well, it's my pleasure, as always. Um, so your piece today, um, Obama and Boehner agree on one thing, giving the shaft to Americans. Um, all right, see, just now I, I read the story, and we, we'll talk about the story, but I think it was two weeks ago we disagreed a little bit on, on the column on Ted Cruz. Um, I, I got to say that, uh, you know, to me, Obama is out to inflict pain, and Boehner really isn't. Yeah, no, I think that that absolutely is true. You know, all of this, the horror stories we've seen with the National Park Service and the, the non-payment of, uh, of, of the families of our fallen soldiers uh, overseas, the idea that, that uh, the Pentagon would not pay those uh, families in, uh, immediately in timely fashion as they're, as they're directed to by Congress. You know, all of these things are, are, are up to the discretion of President Obama. He could uh, – and, and, and the, the, the other thing about the, the, the Park Service that I find uh, most offensive is the notion that somehow – the federal government owns the, this parkland around the country and, and, and uh, invites us to come and, and play on their land. When that is not at all the relationship, you and I own that land, and we have, we have tasked the federal government with, uh, with maintaining it. And when they fall on their face and simply can't uh, carry out their basic duties, uh, they have no right to tell us we can't then uh, you know, go out on that land. No, I, could, I couldn't agree with you more on what's taking place, what took place. I mean, I'm sure you heard this, but listen to Nancy Pelosi yesterday at that illegal alien rally, uh, which unfortunately was attended by some or at least one uh, Republican congresswoman uh, that I know of um, as well. But here she, she had the nerve to get up there and thank the president for opening up the mall for them, but then made a false statement at the end as well. Here, here's the cut. I want to join my colleague uh, uh, who meant, uh, thank the president for enabling us to gather here and also thank the president that the veterans were able to gather at the World War II Memorial. I mean, that's a lie. That's closed. The total lie, absolute total lie. And, and across the country, the number of people who have been uh, denied access to, uh, to, to national parks have been ticketed, have been harassed by uh, park rangers. And the, to me, the most offensive is, is these uh, great men who stormed the beaches of Normandy and so that we could be free today, uh, that, that they were actually blocked from going to the World War II uh, memorial. She is absolutely lying, uh, which, of course, I guess shouldn't come as that much of a surprise. But, uh, but, that, but, her, but the idea that she would thank the president uh, for... for <laughs> To a rally for illegal aliens yep. on the National Mall, which you know, and where was INS? Why was INS uh, not parked right outside the rally, just uh, rounding people up? I, I don't get that. Well, we, we don't do that in our in this country. And and, and, and and all right, I'll tell you, I'll tell you why. Here's another thing, and this this speaks to the next cut. Can we play that Obama cut? Here's Mark Nola. He's well, not here, but here's Obama answering a Mark Nola question about uh, yesterday at the press conference. And, and the question was, why don't you just sign these what you call piecemeal bills that the House is uh, passing, let the Senate pass it, and then sign it so you could fund the veterans, you could fund various uh, the National Institute of Health, etc. Here's what he said: We don't get to select which uh, programs we implement or not. You know, there are a whole bunch of things that the Republicans have said are law that we have to do. And I don't get a chance to go back and say, you know what, this cockamamie idea that this Republican uh, congressman came up with, uh, I really don't like, so let's not, uh, let's not implement that. Once you have a budget and a government with a set of functions, you make sure that it's all operating. We don't get to pick and choose based on uh, which party likes what. Okay, you talk about liars. That's all he. I just, I just played. I had had a Senator Leon before. I mean, that's all this guy does is pick and choose on immigration laws. What, which, which parts of the laws to enforce on Obamacare, on 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 the Dream Act. I mean, this guy. That's all he does. And and the amazing thing about that, Steve, is that that uh, uh, he, he is fundamentally uh, mistaken about what the Constitution. Uh, how, how the Constitution lays out the powers. He is exactly right in that he 
cannot pick and choose. He does not have that right. He is the head of the executive But branch. he does it anyway, but yeah. He, oh, yeah, but he does it anyway, uh, where he is absolutely dead wrong, and, and, and it proves that he I, – I honestly do not think he has read the Constitution. The Constitution lays out that Congress does have that authority. That is what Congress does. It holds the purse strings of the government. It says what shall be funded and what shall not be funded. And the idea that he can sit down there and just dismiss and, and say that, that, that um, he's not going to negotiate with Congress on, uh, you know, on these budget issues is just mind-blowing. Because, of course, that is the only purpose of – that is the most important purpose – of the U.S. Congress is they determine what we spent, what, what, how are your and my tax dollars get spent, and then and then they direct him as as the executive to go spend it that way. Well, you know what he's doing? He's lying. I mean, blatantly lying, like uh, like uh, his Treasury Secretary uh, when Chris Chris Wallace on Sunday said to him, you know, uh, he, let me give you a history here. The president says uh, they played a clip of Obama saying it's never been done before where the raising the debt ceiling is tied to other issues. Oh. And, 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 and Wallace went down the list, the number of times, the issues involved. And Jack Lew comes back and says basically that the sky is, is blue and the, uh, is green and the grass is blue. He says, uh, I, I, I don't think you have your history right, Chris. I mean, what? He just told you what the history was. You know what they're doing? This is what Saul, if you read Saul Alinsky's Rules for Radicals, I hate to say this, this is it. This is the disinformation. This is, and they get, they know they'll get away with it because the media doesn't take them to task on these obvious lies. Because the media doesn't take them to task on it. And because uh, most Americans are too civilized and too decent and honest uh, to actually engage in this kind of nonsense, because when somebody says something that black and white, you, you, you assume that they're not just making it up. Right. But we have reached a whole new level of uncivility or incivility, whatever the word is, that, that, that I don't feel like I've ever seen before. We had the, pres the sitting president of the United States yesterday uh, in the White House saying that the people who opposed his political position were arsonists, kidnappers, uh, we've heard language about terrorists, people holding guns to people's heads, all because they held a different political position, a political position that he himself held just a few years ago. In 2006, ago. yeah. Yes, and, and the notion that that is where, I mean, and, and can you imagine if President George W. Bush at the height of the Gulf War had come out, and, or, or the war in Iraq, had come out and attacked those decent Americans who were opposed to the war in Iraq, and attacked them and said that they wanted to hurt America, that they were terrorists. No, but, but no, Charles, he yeah, here's what he did do. He called three terrorist nations the axis of evil, and they took them to task for that. Yeah. Yes, exactly, exactly. And yet now we have this whole new uh, – and the idea of, of, of impugning the integrity of massive swaths of millions of voters, the, 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 the Tea Party people. The idea that, that you know that, that they're uh, that that he thinks he can actually run them down and denigrate them, and he do, and and he needs to defeat them, and and that he no longer you know because you know that he's not their president too, is just it, it's just a shocking arrogance yep. and and a disregard for the Constitution and and what what the what America stands. For. We're talking to Charles Hurt, the great columnist for the Washington Times, here on the Steve Malzberg show as we do each week. Um, but you know what? That's that's who he is. I mean, he's not running for any election uh, that we know of uh, anymore. So th yeah, now he does, it, does, it doesn't matter anymore. He doesn't have to play the game. He doesn't have to even try to make believe that he's the great uniter. He could just go around as he did in his first term. But you know, he, now he could just be the, what he really is, which is the great divider. Yeah, but, you know, Steve, and, that, and that, that is the heart of this entire thing, I think, with him, is that he is no longer um, – he, this is no longer politics to him in any sort it's of – It's personal, way. right? It's personal, and he wants to destroy uh, uh, John Boehner. He wants to destroy the Republican caucus in Congress. He despises the House, and he just wants to do everything he can. To, he's just going in there slashing and cutting and trying to, to uh, cause as much trouble as he can in there. Uh, to make uh, to make that, their lives miserable, and you. because you know, cause if, if 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 he doesn't do that now, then his power he, every day he wakes up, 
he will wake up with less power than he had the day before. You know, yeah, but it, it, you know, it takes me to I'm watching CNN now, and they got the thing on the crawl taking a beating in the polls. GOP gets the worst of the shutdown fallout. Uh, meanwhile, it's very close. It, it, the Democrats could never have predicted this. But here's another thing: Obama's approval rating is 37 percent, according to the AP's latest poll. So the story they put out today, and I'm sure you know this by now, uh, the story they put out today is uh, GOP takes a beating in the in the polls, and in the seventh paragraph they put that obama's approval rating is down to 37 percent that's yeah. what we're dealing with yeah that's that's the media but but obviously you know because of people like you and people that uh in you know like the drudge report and and breitbart and uh, you know all these other uh conservative uh voices uh that are out there today that we that weren't around in 95 i do believe that uh that at least there is some chance of sort of getting um, a, 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 some a, a little bit more uh, fair treatment right now, but of course in the in the mainstream media it's just as despicable as ever. But also, you know, with these polls that, that show Congress getting a beating, of course, if you took a poll inside Congress, Congress <laughs> would get a beating in a poll. You know, it, 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 they're utterly meaningless. The, fa- the, the truth of the matter is that that the Republicans can go back home and they can say, I voted. A thousand times to keep the government running, right? I, you know, and 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 make a great argument about that and how Harry Reid and Democrats simply refuse to allow uh, votes to come up to keep the government well, running. Well, here's that's another one. Yeah, that's another one. How many times have you heard? Why doesn't John Boehner just allow a vote from the whole House on a C- clean CR? And I'm sure it'll pass. Well, why doesn't Harry Reid bring up? Any one of the uh, the uh, continuing resolutions that have been passed by the House that would fund kids for cancer, fund the veterans benefits, open the parks. Why doesn't he let them vote? They, I've never once heard the president, obviously, but even the media say, why doesn't Reid allow votes on that? You think Democrats are going to vote against funding the NIH with kids with cancer? Absolutely and you, not. And did you see today Harry Reid was having a press conference? Well, that's what I was going to bring up. I'm holding it in my hands. The mayor of D.C., uh, we talked yeah. about this earlier, the mayor of D.C., Vincent Gray, uh, crashed Reed's press conference and said, um, "Sir, we're not a department of your government. Of the government, um, we're simply trying to be able to spend our own money." And Reed says, "I'm on your side. Don't screw it up." <laughs> he tells he tells he tells Gray not to screw it up. First, I got to wake Harry Reed up, shake him a little bit, and then he said that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but you know, this is a, this is a bill that House Republicans uh, uh, passed through, through easily passed in the chamber to allow the D.C. government to continue governing, to c- continue running because because of the weird nature of the federal city, uh, it must uh, get actual permission to spend the tax dollars that it right. generates on its own. It's their it's own money, and they and Harry Reid has it within his that within his power to bring it up and let it. The Republicans pass in the House, bring it up, fund D.C. and their government, and he won't do it. Yep, and and even Eleanor Holmes Norton, the non-voting. Uh, House member, clearly a Democrat, as you might imagine, yes. uh, was over there as well, uh, kind of haranguing him. And, and what did Terry Reid say? Don't screw it up. Don't I'm screw on your it side. up. She said Democrats at this critical moment, this was at their press conference, which was 50 feet away, have abandoned their long-held principles, uh, calling it shameful to hold the city's local funds, get this, hostage to make federal points and uh, and and Reed says, "Don't screw it up. I'm on your side." <laughs> this guy, and it's it's uh, it is it is unfathomable. I don't even know what to say. And as you write about in your column today at the Washington Times, these uh, we're out of time almost, but we got about a minute. These these federal workers who have been furloughed, they're on vacation because they're getting yeah. back pay when it's over. Yeah, it's just absolutely mind-boggling. And and think about the poor uh, federal workers who didn't get furloughed who are still at their at their jobs. Knowing that all these guys that have been out uh, <laughs> looking around at home all week are going to come back, and then they're going to still get paid for it. It's insane. Charles, always great to talk to you, sir. Thank you very much. Thanks, Steve. Take care. Charlie Hurt, ladies and gentlemen, uh, columnist, Washington Times. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, it's bizarre. It's bizarre. They should just get computerized robots, put them on CNN. Put, and you know, the viciousness. It's the viciousness. Of a of a of an Ashley Banfield, of a Gloria Borger, of these people whose whose true colors are coming out, how they just attack Republicans and blame Republicans and indict Republicans, and they're so happy Republicans are suffering them. And you know, hey, so why don't you at least say, and Harry Reid should really bring up for a vote in the Senate the bills that have been passed in the House that would fund. 
vital things such as veteran services and 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 kids with cancer services and and all that. No, I've never heard it once. It's only why doesn't John Boehner bring it up in the House? Well, they've passed things in the House. Why doesn't Reid bring it up in the Senate? Nope. Oops. Quiet. Let's see how much play this story of the Washington D.C. mayor demanding from Harry Reid that he bring up for a vote and pass the right for D.C. to to spend their own money. All right, we're coming back. Steve Ballsberg Show on Newsmax TV and radio.